We are here today at Mount Rushmore, one of the true icons of American history, memorabilia, memory. Uh, the, the memorial is beautiful. And I'm holding in my hands the real ID issue, revokerealid.com. I'm holding the petition, an online petition, that we need every American who loves the ideals expressed here in the lives of these presidents that represented our courage and faith. We need people to help us keep those values of freedom intact and vote quick. Just fill out your name and email address and make it go viral so that we can take the resolution into Congress. If we get 100,000 votes, this will go to the desk of the president immediately. It will go to the desk of every congressman and every senator. Now, those of you that have clicked it before, you'll have to start over again. because, Or maybe they had trouble with the links. We've heard a few things. But we are now extended into the end of September to get the 100,000 votes. And that's a good benchmark to walk into Washington with a resolution in hand. Because Congress gauges the matters they vote about or pay attention to on just a much smaller scale of only 10,000 votes or 10,000 complaints. So if we walk in with this completed at 100,000 votes, it will instantly, as a part of the software, wethepeople.com, go to the desk of the president. And I'm going to tell you that, you know, it's distressful to see that people will come to the park and not want to hear a word about God. But man didn't build this mighty nation. These men revered God in their writings and in their speeches, and they knew who against all odds had delivered us to be a free nation. So would you join me now in a moment of prayer, just like our forefathers did. Heavenly Father, we pray for this nation, and we pray that the values of these forefathers who allowed us to experience and we are praying right here in front of these presidents' heads carved here of this marvelous, magnificent memorial in the Black Hills. We are praying that these values stay intact. So join me now, and there's action we want you to take. It's revokerealid.com, R-E-V-O-K-E-R-E-A-L-I-D, revokerealid.com. And we've just completely redone the site, and I'm going to read to you what it says at the top of it. A resurrect America, revoke real ID, and then it's got bullet points. And the big Q in yellow, and it says the first point, if you refuse the real ID driver's license, what will happen to you? Well, in, in October uh, 1st of 2020, with supposedly no more mercy left, that'll be the, com the uh, final compliance deadline. This thing started uh, taking on its first... Uh, initiatives of putting these real IDs in people's hands in October uh, of 2018. So after October 1st, 2020, in its various installations and phases, it won't all happen at once, but you'll see one thing start and then everything will come in quick succession after it as the government uh, funds it and completes their plans. You won't be able to fly locally domestically without a real ID driver's license or real ID card in your hand. Now break uh, that down for us. Break yes. that down. What does a real ID do and what is the difference between a driver's license and a real ID? What's the difference between the two? Well, a driver's license now just simply says you've passed a driver's test. Uh, you are qualified by the government to drive a car and you're current with all requirements. Uh, when I first saw the problem arise, it was when I got a hold of a Massachusetts driver's license in my hand and um, saw that there was instead a piece of chip on it on the forehead parallel. It should have been down in the lower right corner. You can see this on our website. We've got a picture of it. There was an empty lower right corner on the driver's license. As a graphic artist, I immediately realized somebody had intended graphically for something to be there, but instead, this piece of chip, which would fill that size, uh, was not in that empty part of the driver's license. It was up on the forehead parallel, and it was um, colliding with written information. So it wasn't really in a good position. It didn't make sense. So then I began to ask questions. Then there was a yellow star at the top. I have now seen a card that is not Real ID compliant in a state that is demanding Real ID. And that was with uh, Marilyn's associate from California. She had one of her nephews in her hand. And it means if you do not have the yellow star at the top, you will enter no 
government buildings whatsoever, locally, state, or federal. Let me go over that list real fast. Okay. okay. If you are not compliant and you do not have the yellow star on your driver's license, you will not get into a police station to come into the front desk, inquire about something in the reception area, unless you're coming in in handcuffs in the back, um, you know, because you've been arrested. You will not go into a courthouse to enact your business as we all from time to time have civil uh, duties. We work with a will, a deed, or whatever you may be in a courthouse for. Unless you're coming in in handcuffs as a criminal, you're not getting in without the real ID to go through the front doors with a scanner. You will not get into an IRS tax center if you need help with your taxes. It's a government installation without that real ID. You will not get into a welfare feeding center or anything of a welfare nature with the federal government unless you have something in your hand that complies with the real ID. That might not start exactly um, at the first part of October. It's probably one of the programs that will spiral a little further out. Then if you go to your local civic hall, you will not be allowed in your state house. Now let's talk about flying. We're in a state where we have lots of Bible schools, lots of evangelists, students coming in and out, mission teams that are getting ready to fly overseas. All of a sudden, if this is ignored, they'll get to the airport and they'll not fly anywhere. A businessman will not fly anywhere. If you do not have the real ID with the yellow star and the chip or a barcode on it, they won't let you on an airplane. Now when you do have it, you get in a line that is expedited and you get there faster further with a privilege to make it seem like something coveted that you would like to have, this real ID. But let's look at what's already happening to people who do not have the real ID in real ID compliant states and want to travel overseas. It trumps your passport. You cannot get on the plane with a passport that doesn't match it unless the passport is updated already, whether it's ready to expire or not, they're gonna ignore the expiration date. You're gonna pay the $80, $100, 110 I think it is, to get a brand new passport, and that has to have a chip in it that matches your real ID. So now, these now are just this, some of the things. Uh, uh, thank you, that, that's, that's what I want people to know. This is why we do a community show. We're letting people know immediately uh, that there's information that needs to be said, there's things that need to be done, but what if you have uh, basic information? People fly all the time, but they think they have TSA pre-check, they have global, they have international clearance to go places. All of these things will be non-compliant? They will be non-compliant. From the real ID. From okay. the real ID. And I can tell you a little more information about the real ID. And let's, let's back up here just a little bit. Let's back up. Okay. So... When you go on our website, these questions will be answered for you. Let me just bullet point them quickly. Give now. us the website first. Yes, it's Revoke Real ID. R E V O K E R E A L I D. Revoke Real ID dot com. Okay. All right, you'll see the bullet points. If you refu refuse the Real ID driver's license, what will happen come October 1st, 2020? You can't fly locally or foreign without it. You will not use an Amtrak or a subway system, those are government systems. You can't use your current passport until it's updated. You will not drive down a toll road in the next phases of this. This might not hit you immediately on October 1st, 2020, but it's in the making. You will not drive down a toll road, I-440, I-412, I-70, I-95. So if you already have a pipe pass. It won't do you any good. It's not gonna do you any good. You, no. This is a crisis. We are sounding the alarm. We're telling you right now to go to revokerealid.com uh, that's what you got to do. Go to revokerealid.com. Folks, we're updating you. We're telling you it's coming. It's almost a year in advance that we're telling you. And the reason why we're telling you is because it's going to adversely affect senior citizens, uh, tribal people, and, and maybe some government officials. I oh, mean, yes. people think military. they have military ID, but all of those IDs will need to be changed over to get a chip. And so... Walk us through if the federal chip, what's the purpose? Is it supposed to keep our government safe? Yes. What's the, what's the concept behind even doing real ID? Well, the concept behind it is that, you know, the dear folks that were in Congress after 9-11 hit, bless their hearts, they all tried to make us feel safer. They all uh, tried to be sure that these terrorists were never going to attack again. But on one of the handouts on, on will it keep us safe, one of those flyers that you can get off the website in the tabs at the top, uh, you can see what we've said about that on the very first page of it. We've got a picture, and the picture shows um, 
Terry Nichols and um, McVeigh blowing up the Murrah Federal Building, did they have a real ID to show anybody? No. They just drove by and dropped off a 7,000 pound fertilizer for gas bomb. Did the guys that blew up the 9-11 towers have any kind of an ID to stop them or the Pentagon? Nope. They were Islamic entities that had gotten into the pool of pilots uh, flying for American Airlines. They didn't go through TSA or anything else. They had special privileges that got them around all of that, got in the airplanes, blew up the side of the Pentagon and two twin towers. So the idea that this is going to save us doesn't pan out. And then they tried to do even more in 2005 with the Real ID Act. And supposedly the Real ID Act is supposed to keep us, um, you know, safe from terrorists, know who everybody is keep illegal immigration down and voter fraud. But let's go back to what this actually does and let, let's talk about where it came from. So more of what it will do is prevent you from owning a gun. If they say they need you to turn it in, they'll know exactly where it's located and they'll know where you're located at all times with this digital chip, just like your cell phone does. Um, you will not be able to flee a disaster area at your own speed or choice of exit route in some kind of a major disaster like an earthquake or if the flooding would have gotten any batter around Sand Springs or Tulsa, God forbid, or some kind of a hurricane or a war. Uh, you would most likely be stopped on one of those roads or a toll road at a government checkpoint with a brand new federal police force. Now, I have had a conversation with a state cop about the federal police force. He told me this bright young man with a good career told me that he was leaving the state police. I said, why? He said, because they just sent me to a school to train to be a federal police officer. That resonates with what Adolf Hitler and Mussolini did and King George before our bloody revolution in the 1700s. And why? Because the federal police was um, initiated in its first ideas by a 1992 resolution for global mapping and global um, control of human population. So that could happen to you in some of the final stages of this. You will not hold a government job locally, state, or federal if you refuse to have the ID. Your job will be over. It will interfere with the military. We had a conversation with the head of the in Washington, D.C., and I asked him, I said, are you going to allow our young men and women in uniform to carry these government-issued IDs when they're overseas in Iraq and Iran, Afghanistan? He said, of course. And I said, do you realize this is being monitored by computers in the EU? We now understand it's Sephron, Papillion Company. They are Russian technology groups right, and right. French. What will happen to our military at that point? Somebody will instantly discern by what's on the card what their rank and serial number are, what their assignments and technical specialties are, and therefore what the battalion is most likely composed of, about ready to do, how many of them are present, and what their... Uh, military assignment of the day might be. Could we so, dare to compromise our military uh, that well, way? Well, I think people don't really understand that this is a United States identification system that's run by foreigners. It's run by somebody that'll be in another country that's right. that will have all of your personal information almost to the tune of you being in a computer as a robot. They will have your specialty your identification, you will be given a serial number, uh, and you won't have access to the normal things that you do without them knowing that you are moving, traveling, transferring. I, and I believe the government's already doing this. Yes. But nobody knows it, and it hasn't interfered with their lives yet. That's so exactly now, right. Now you're going to have to drive across America. Instead of fly. Because your flying privileges will be over if you do not have a real ID. Now, one of the questions I want to get in real quickly is that Oklahoma has not yet complied with this. That's right. And thank God that they have not. But we're caving in. We heard today that some papers were signed at the time. I don't know who signed them. I'm still trying to get to the bottom of this. But we're starting to cave in. I know that Senator Inhofe's office has not yet caved in. Lankford's has not yet caved in. I talked to their legislative assistants. Uh, back in February, and they have a keen interest in this and want follow-up, but there are already some agreements and papers being signed. And in resisting, people are trying to figure out a way to still be able to interact with the rest of America in a resistant state of being. Well, Oklahoma has done a good job of holding them off this far. Yes. I hope that uh, we can start the campaign and get it moving online. Tell us about how people can go online and join the movement. We need how many clicks? We need 100,000 signatures. 
at wethepeople.com. Mr. Obama, President Obama sent that site up for the White House. They didn't cancel it, so President Trump is still using it. If we get 100,000 votes on our petition to revoke the Real ID Act and cast off uh, the surveillance of foreign powers, then that will immediately go to President Trump's desk. It will immediately go to the desk of every senator and every congressman in Washington, D.C. That allows us to come back in with a coalition of legislators like yourself, political activists, uh, leaders who are, are concerned and interested, even public that we you know um, interview and, and will take along with us. And then we uh, get together on a resolution we've already drafted. This has already gone into the hands of some of these folks. It will have a resolution for the House side. It will have a resolution for the Senate side. It has to go to something called the Post Office Committee. And then in order to get this revoked, we have to have it go to argument on both the Senate and the House floor. And we have to have a majority vote of all three, President, Senate, and Congress, to revoke this. But not to revoke it is to falsely proclaim that we are free Americans in a surveillance it's type dominated yeah. state. Now, some people have never heard of what I'm about to say, and it'll probably scare the living daylights out of them, but I'm going to preface it with this. I would rather know a tornado was coming to get in the tornado shelter and pray against it. I would rather know there was a hurricane coming to store up some food and decide whether I needed to leave the area. I would rather know that there was a bridge out so I could take the detour. So we don't want to be ostriches with our head in the sand when something very uh, malevolent is headed our way, when a massive gear changer for a society such as this is on the very heels of our freedom. And uh, I want people to pay very close attention. A series of world events caused the Real ID Act. Basically, Islam plotted, attacked, and tracked. And what I'm going to say here is very important. 1990, the Cairo Declaration of Human Rights brought forth Sharia-based rights, which was very negative for women and many uh, people. It was not at all like the 1946 UN Resolution of Human Rights. In 1992, uh, the UN Resolution Sustainable Development Global Solution, it's known as SDGS, came about in Buenos Aires, Brazil. It's about a thousand page long document. If you want to research or need to research it, you can click at our website of revokerealid.com on its icon and search and read to your heart's content. But in Article 6.9, which we have snapshotted on the website, this UN resolution ordered the World Bank to create global biometrics computer tracking development to become fully uh, compliant in 2030. This matched the uh, United Arab Emirates declaration that they would also do biometrics mapping of their population. So then in 1993, they came to the UN. They got the UN to adapt the Cairo Declaration of Human Rights with its UAE biometrics compliance. Then in 2001, these same entities, those involved in it with various organizations such as CARE, the Council on Islamic Relations, and others, uh, there was an attack by Osama bin Laden on his uh, second cousin's property, Alawid Bentalak, who owned the Soho properties we know as the Twin Towers. The reason was because of their anger and jealousy uh, with American groups such as Halliburton and Carlisle Oil Companies and politicians that were involved in ownership of those, such as Dick Cheney and Bush and others and Soros and many others. Uh, there are persons who were involved in that attack who are now in federal prison, such as Ala Moody. You can go to our website and you can click to your heart's content and find many links that will just lead you for hours in research if you so choose. Um, then in 2001, this attack that had occurred led to the Patriot Act. Some of these very same people presented themselves as the good guys in the Islamic equation. And uh, they talk the air off of President Bush and members of Congress. Today, if you go to the halls of Congress and talk about the Patriot Act, it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or Republican, everybody kind of hangs their head and wants to look the other way and not talk about it. It's sort of embarrassing to them for some reason. In 2005, some of these same folks came into the ears of our Congress and caused the H.R. 1268 Real ID Act to be signed into law. When President Bush signed it into law, he never even mentioned what it was on the news press release. It was full of the biometrics mapping for all U.S. citizens to be encoded on a federal driver's license. Then in 2009, two men from Damascus, Syria, who were members of MPAC and CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, were appointed by Barack Obama and 
uh, Janet Napolitano to the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, one of them was an official member of the Council on American Islamic Relations. And um, Arif Ekalan, then there, he was the Assistant Secretary for Policy Development. Then also at the Department of Homeland Security, Kareem Shora was appointed as the National Executive Director of Homeland Security Advisory Council. So during the time that these biometrics plans were being developed, those fellows were in charge. Then in 2005 to now, uh, up to 2020 deadline of being compliant with the Real ID, a company was hired by the Morpho Trust USA, which has now become Ademia. And they publish the driver's license and they supply a top secret activation code to the biometrics components of their EU offshore overseas partners, Abathor, Saffron, Advent, and Papillon. These companies have now come under the compliance of the United Arab Emirates, which started this whole circle in the first place with the Cairo Declaration of Human Rights that you heard me mention in the beginning. Uh, some of the entities that I'm discussing, especially the president of the Council on American Islamic Relations, they have been uh, suspected, sued, put in prison, run, um, uh, attacked overseas, uh, put in their graves. This has been a real mess. And the last thing on earth that most Americans would want to know is that folks of that uh, background were in the highest level possible positions of our homeland security got into positions that were very high up in uh, the FBI and other areas that were developing these biometrics plans. So then a Saffron Company in France did a secret merger with Papillon, which is part of the Russian Intelligence Defense Biometrics Development Department. So this has come out of the Clinton administration, the Bush administration, the Obama administration to hit President Trump in the face with all the false accusations of his messing with Russian surveillance. But look, folks, this is where it all started back in um, 1990 with the Cairo Declaration of Human Rights, their desire to map all population through the UAA, the declaration of the SDGS that ordered the World Bank to start this global biometrics plan that hired Morph um, Trust USA, and then the attack that happened to us on 9-11 that got us scared. So we were plotted against. We were attacked. They took advantage of the catalyst of our fear. Then they brought us into the tracking program they were looking for all along. And now uh, the cyber security uh, questions that were asked by the state of Oklahoma and a few other states that are resisting to become compliant were quashed and never brought up in the congressional hearings while this Real ID was being brought forth. So now who's going to track you? after they plotted and attacked you, these very high level Islamic entities and this overseas configuration of biometrics mapping systems. So we need to ask Congress, we need to vote no to the real ID. We need to ask Congress and our president to evoke an investigation of these companies that have been mentioned that are listed on our website. And you'll find links to many, many other uh, groups, including uh, Democrat and Republican, that have researched and complained, and they're utilizing the same information, the same names. So we're not somebody stirring up a controversy. Many of these things actually have congressional records, and um, they're no secret. But pulling it all together in a picture like this is not the commonplace uh, diet of most people who go on the internet. So it may be new news to you, but I welcome you to research. We've validated everything. So basically what you're looking at is a request to Congress in our resolution, which is also on the website, revokerealid.com. We're asking Congress to, to bring about an investigation, bring Morpho Trust USA Edemia into an investigation, demand that they give the secret activation code up, then that we basically unplug from all of the biometrics components of partners overseas, divorce those partners forever, and then we can have the prettiest, nice $10 billion budget of driver's license, real IDs floating around, but they won't have any usefulness. They won't harm us. They won't do anything to us. It's that simple because we have had the code to be surrendered and disconnected from those companies. Therefore, nobody can be mapped and tracked. But that would probably also mean a very severe investigation 
of folks that are working in those various departments of government that I just mentioned, and a big question uproar from the American people. What are you doing there? Um, why would you want to map and track us in the first place? And have you truly surrendered the code and dissolved it? And uh, basically, we need to say to congressmen and senators, uh, 2020 elections coming up. If you don't revoke, we don't vote for you until you clean the Dated. Yeah. state. So all of the things Come. you've been watching in the movies and all of the, the eye scanning and the fingerprinting and all these things can be uh, captured. Can but tell us, tell us tell us when uh, um, the next time you're going to be in Washington, D.C. The next time I'll be in Washington, D.C., we'll be with Tommy Collins and others who have political activist behaviors that are combining with ours and, and uh, organizations, and that will be in September. Uh, we're planning on having a briefing to educate people that need to, to understand what this is. So if you're a leader in an in a arena where you govern, you've been elected, or perhaps you're a pastor, or you're the corporate uh, chairman of a business. Oh, if there can be tribal leaders. Tribal well. leaders, exactly, yeah. of our native tribes. If you're a leader in a leadership position, get in touch with us. Uh, sign up on the contact tab of revokerealid.com, and we will consider taking you along with us. And then we'll have a briefing there. We'll also be meeting with members of the press. And we've got a slogan coming up for 2020. Don't revoke, we don't vote. Wow. And that's serious, folks. Uh, 2020 is an election year. You've seen all of the presidential candidates gearing up. Maybe, just maybe, you can get on their website and tweet and say, what is your position on real ID? Uh, we want uh, Dr. Shelley Landon to, to give her contact information. I have a, a number here for you to be able to reach her. Yes. At the top, Dr. Shelley Landon, 774. 212-0834. That's 774-212-0834. Folks, if you don't get on board and you don't pay attention, some of these things are going to swoop right by you and all of your privileges will be gone because the federal government is moving and people think, I don't want to get involved in politics because I don't know what's going on. Well, if you don't get involved, then your vote and your voice will be erased because you didn't get involved with the Repeal Real ID Act. So go to revokerealid.com. That is revokerealid.com so you can get more information. This is serious. And we already know it's not keeping our federal government safe. No. They're changing buildings. You need to look at the new IDs um, with numbers going across your forehead, indentions in your chin, Things that are not located properly on a normal ID mission has already been drafted so we can make sure you have a you copy of this resolution. And we want to talk about how Congress and the United States is overlooking the opportunity to talk to you. So let's talk about the website that you got to go to, wethepeople.com. Uh, well, no, it's, uh, it's, it's much easier when you go to revoke realid.com at the top there's a little pink star and it says vote no there's also down at the bottom a square a copy an icon of the petition online at wethepeople.com you click on that because if you just go to wethepeople.com you'll spend all day trying to find our resolution and that's, many that's a deterrent so just people. yeah just click on it make it go viral on facebook do whatever you can to get people to vote on it all right all right well that makes sense that makes sense now go to re go to revoke uh, realid.com. Now, one of the things I want to say, I want to list some of the states that have already been in compliance uh, for that. I want to make sure we talk about the states that are still holding out. Yes. So, uh, the people in these states may not be able to decide to get the real ID because their state is requesting an extension for time or they are refusing to comply. So, that means that these people will not be allowed to fly foreign or domestic. You won't be able to go from Oklahoma to Houston, from Houston to California, from California back to Florida. So we're looking at this and I want to I want to show you this picture mm -hmm. of the Real ID Act. I yeah. want to put it right here so that you can Oops. you can kind of see it yeah. on the uh, on the on the page. But the foreign the states that are uh, requesting an extension and refusing to comply is Alaska, California, is. Guam, Illinois, Kentucky, Maine, Missouri, Montana, 
and uh, those untitled states, uh, North uh, Mariana Islands, New Jersey, Oklahoma. That's the real ID, folks. We want to show it to you. Uh, we've got and Facebook look where the Live digital chip on. is. Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and the Virginia Islands. So I want you to look at that where that chip is located. If yeah. you can see it, it's right. You can show oh, it, it again. Went dead. Show went it like this. Let's show it. Uh, let's let's show it right here. Um, and they'll get that get that real ID. But yeah. I want to make sure you if for more information. You can call 774-212-0834. That's 774-212-0834. This is the Anastasia Pittman Show right here on KTLV, 1220 AM. And remember, love your neighbor like you love yourselves. God bless you today.